Hello everyone, the population of lynx in the US has surged to nearly 3 million individuals, causing significant economic damage, estimated at nearly 1 billion USD annually, including agricultural losses and attacks on humans. Despite the relatively low rate of American hunters targeting wildcats, around 6, there has been a 20 TNT increase in hunter participation since the beginning of the year 2024. This growth reflects the pressing need to manage the escalating lynx population, and the critical role of hunters has become more prominent as they work to control this invasive species. So what methods are American hunters employing to address this challenge? Join us as we explore these strategies and subscribe to our channel for the latest up. Hunting bobcats with rifles is a popular method among American hunters due to its effectiveness and deep cultural heritage. This practice requires hunters to be at least 18 years old and possess a valid hunting license in the state where they hunt. Some states may also require a specific tag or license to hunt wildcats, emphasizing the importance of knowing local hunting regulations, including season dates, population limits, and legal hunting methods. What do you think is the most important factor in choosing the right equipment for hunting lynx and bobcats, caliber, ammunition type, or optics? Hunters often choose highly accurate rifles such as the double two one two three, Remington 22-2250, and Dot 243 Winchester, as these calibers provide sufficient power for the job. The right ammunition is crucial, with hollow point or soft point bullets, commonly used for small to medium sized right game. I just saw something flash right up through here. Nice, he's rolling. Ooh. Additionally, optics play a significant role in successful hunting. A quality scope with variable magnification, like 3 nanx or 412x, is popular for spotting and shooting lynx accurately. Binoculars are also useful for observing terrain and spotting bobcats from a distance. Additionally, calls are another essential tool for hunters. Electronic calling devices can simulate various predator distress sounds, attracting bobcats, while hand calls can imitate the calls of small animals. When a lynx is attracted to the sound and approaches, it's crucial to stay calm and quiet. Hunters should minimize movement and control their breathing to avoid alerting the animal. Identifying the target correctly and assessing the surroundings are also critical steps. When preparing for the shot, hunters should position themselves for a steady aim using a shooting stick or bipod if sitting
or finding a stable stance if standing. Careful aiming is essential, targeting the vital areas behind the shoulder for a quick and humane kill. Timing and trigger control are vital, as rushing the shot can lead to a miss or non-fatal hit. After the shot, hunters should watch the bobcat's reactions and be prepared for a follow-up shot if necessary. Third shot right there. The follow-up involves carefully tracking the blood trail if the animal does not fall immediately. How do you think the use of rifles in hunting wildcats impacts both the efficiency of the hunt and the welfare of the animals? Hunting wildcats with rifles, in particular, has several advantages. Hunters can often take down 10-15 wildcats per hunt, thanks to the rapid fire efficiency and accuracy of the rifle. Oh, yeah! Yes! This reduces the risk of injuring the animal and ensures a humane kill. The long-range shooting ability of the rifle allows hunters to target wary animals like wildcats from a distance, creating more opportunities for accurate shots. However, hunting bobcats with a rifle comes with several disadvantages, primarily related to the noise produced by the firearm. The loud yes. sound of a rifle can disturb yeah. not only the target bobcat, but also other wildlife in the area. Additionally, in regions with a high concentration of hunters, the noise can serve as an inadvertent signal, alerting others to your presence and potentially leading to competition for the same prey. Have you ever experienced such situations while hunting where the noise of a rifle impacted your chances? <laughs> Hunters, or in particular, play a crucial role in bobcat hunting, particularly in wildlife management. Through population control, hunters help manage wildcat numbers, preventing them from reaching levels that could negatively impact ecosystems and prey species. <laughs> Controlled hunting ensures a balanced relationship between predators and their prey contributing to the health of the environment. Moreover, by adhering to regulations and supporting conservation initiatives, hunters participate in the sustainable management of what Additionally, ethical hunting is a fundamental aspect of the hunter's role, emphasizing humane harvesting practices. This includes using the appropriate equipment, ensuring accurate shooting, and avoiding causing unnecessary suffering to the animal. Ethical hunters also show respect for wildlife by following the principles of fair hunting and not exploiting the animal's vulnerabilities. What are your thoughts on this approach? We'd love to hear your perspective so please share your views in the comments section below. Wild pigs and other invasive species in Canada are wreaking havoc on the agricultural industry.
In 2021 alone, the damage amounted to a staggering $1.01 billion, and projections indicate this could soar to $2.05 billion by 2023. Join us as we delve into this critical issue in our farming documentary and explore the profound impact these invasive species are having on Canadian agriculture. Canadian farmers are searching for the most effective methods to tackle this problem. The wild boar population, as seen in numerous wildlife videos, is one of the main culprits. These animals are highly adaptable and can thrive in various environments. Their rapid reproduction rate makes them particularly challenging to control. The forest in Alberta, located in central Canada, has harbored the largest wild boar population since 1990. Over the years, their numbers have flourished and their population has now surged to around 600,000 animals. Wild boars can consume almost anything in the forest, causing substantial ecological disruption. When forest resources are depleted, they turn to fields and farms, leading to further issues for the agricultural sector. Initially, farmers implemented measures to prevent wild boars from entering their fields, but these measures were not always effective. <laughs> the invasion of wild boars presents a major challenge for Canadian farmers. <laughs> to deter these animals, farmers have experimented with spraying conventional herbicides across their fields. However, the effectiveness of these herbicides diminished over time as their scent faded and the wild boars continued to wreak havoc. The visible damage in cornfields is a clear testament to the struggles farmers face in protecting their crops. Protecting fields from encroaching wild boars poses significant challenges in terms of environmental protection and maintaining ecological balance. According to a 2022 Agriculture Canada report, Traps captured about 20,000 wild feral hogs in 2021. While this number is relatively small compared to the estimated total wild hog population of about 1 million, it demonstrates some level of effectiveness. These traps work by making noise to repel wild boars and can be used in various terrains, including rough areas. Cage traps, which do not cause loud or sudden noises, 
are suitable for locations frequently visited by wild boars. Although trapping has proven somewhat effective in controlling feral pig populations, there are still limits. In response, Canadian farmers have taken further steps by erecting fences around fields and farms. However, the problem of wild boars is becoming increasingly severe, and these measures alone are insufficient. As a result, farmers have begun using electric equipment to create protective fences for livestock and farm areas where wild boars frequently appear. They are willing to invest in such equipment despite the cost. Installing an electric fence can cost about $25,000 to $30,000 per mile. And while these fences can last 10 to 20 years if properly maintained, not all farmers find this solution satisfactory. In some areas, wild boars can still overcome these fences, indicating the need for innovative and more effective measures. According to a 2022 University of Alberta study, the most effective method Canadian farmers have used to reduce feral pig populations is hunting. Data from 65 farms in Alberta, British Columbia, and Ontario shows that hunting has significantly reduced the number of wild boars in these areas. Cornfields after harvest are particularly good hunting grounds, as they often attract wild boars due to the leftover food and shelter. The open visibility of these fields, combined with the low vigilance of boars at night, makes hunting more convenient and safer for hunters. Wild boar hunting in cornfields after harvest has been practiced in Canada since the 1990s and has become increasingly popular, especially as the wild boar population has surged. Concrete successes, such as the capture of 1,000 wild boars in Alberta cornfields in 2021 and 500 in British Columbia in 2022, clearly demonstrate the effectiveness of this strategy. <laughs> this not only brings satisfaction to participants, but also helps control and balance the wild environment, protecting Canada's landscape and agricultural resources from wild boar intrusion. Do you enjoy the experience of hunting wild boars? If so, leave a number one. Otherwise, if you don't like it, leave a number zero and share your opinion in the comment section below. Why are wild boars so strongly invasive on US farms? This question will be explored in detail in the next video where we will learn why regions in the southeastern United States, like Georgia and Alabama, are known as homes to the most powerful wild boar populations. Stay tuned for more insights. Way to go. This can
Hunting wild boars in America is an exhilarating experience that combines the beauty of the natural environment with the thrill of the chase. The varied and complex terrain of the American wilderness, ranging from dense jungles and rugged mountain ranges to the vast expanses of the northern and western United States, makes wild boar hunting one of the most challenging and rewarding pursuits. In the southeast, states like Alabama are renowned for their dense forest and intricate landscapes, providing a natural habitat for wild boars. These terrains with their steep slopes and dense underbrush offer perfect hiding spots for the wild pigs, making the hunt more challenging. Wild boars in this region are known for their impressive size and aggressiveness, with some weighing up to 661 pounds and capable of running at speeds of 25 mp. A tragic event in Alabama in 2023 highlighted the dangers of hunting in this region when a hunter was attacked by wild pigs. This incident underscores the importance of proper preparation and equipment. Hunters must hone their skills and carry adequate protective gear to navigate these dangerous terrains safely. The thrill of the hunt in such a challenging environment transforms the experience into unforgettable memories. The northern United States, including states like Alaska, Montana, and Idaho, is notable for its population of wild boars. These animals are larger and more ferocious than their southern counterparts, with some weighing up to 880 pounds and running at speeds of 31 mpf. Hunting in these areas is not just about skill, but also about facing the extreme weather conditions that add to the risk and excitement. In January, a hunter's encounter with harsh weather and aggressive wild pigs highlighted the unpredictability and danger of these hunts. Hunters in the north must be fully equipped with protective gear, including helmets, body armor, and gloves to minimize risks. Learning hunting skills and being prepared is crucial to ensuring safety and success in this wild and challenging environment. It's not. In the western United States, hunters face additional challenges posed by harsh weather conditions.
Rain and snow can turn the ground into a slippery, treacherous landscape, increasing the risk of falls and injuries. Proper preparation, including waterproof clothing and gear, is essential to overcoming these challenges. Facing inclement weather and falling snow is not just about the physical challenge but also about survival. Hunters need to be equipped with knowledge of orientation, survival skills, and maintaining body temperature. Warm clothing, waterproof shoes, and cold-proof sleeping bags are indispensable items for these hunts. The importance of staying warm and dry cannot be overstated, as it helps avoid hypothermia, a potentially life-threatening condition. Safety is always the top priority in wild boar hunting, especially when facing the natural challenges of the American wilderness. Hunters must be thoroughly prepared with spare equipment, food, and knowledge of weather conditions to avoid unnecessary risks. <laughs> Sharing experiences and creating a community of skilled and well-informed hunters is crucial for facing these challenges safely and successfully. Do you enjoy the experience of hunting wild boars? If so, leave a number one. Otherwise, if you don't like it, leave a number zero and share your opinion in the comment section below. This increase is due to many reasons, including urban development encroaching on their natural habitat, along with the attraction of easy food sources in the city. In the bustling pace of urban life, baboons show incredible adaptability. They often rummage through trash cans in search of food, risk destroying orchards, and even break into houses in search of food. Their natural curiosity and complex social structure drive constant exploration, helping them fully exploit new food sources in complex urban environments. One of the serious consequences of baboons appearing in urban areas is their aggressive behavior towards humans. These attacks not only cause injuries, but also stir up deep fear in people's hearts, directly affecting their daily activities and habits. Faced with these challenges, is it really necessary to control Florida's baboon population? If you agree, please press number 1. If you disagree, please press number 0 in the comment section below. In response to baboon intrusions, residents have installed electric fences, 
an effective protective measure designed to deliver non-fatal electric shocks. This fence consists of many electrical wires capable of shocking but not causing serious injury to the animals. However, using electric fences raises ethical concerns regarding the degree of human intervention in the natural behavior and habitat of wildlife to protect prop. <laughs> Additionally, animals may be subjected to repeated electric shocks or in rare cases are at risk of becoming trapped or entangled in fences leading to injury. The second method is the use of traps, a common technique to control baboon populations, the deployment of which has proven effective in various localities where human-baboon interactions are high. Usually happen, these traps are meticulously designed to withstand the baboon's considerable strength while also being large enough to hold multiple individuals at once. bait prepared from fruits, vegetables, and many other particularly attractive foods is placed inside a cage. When the monkey approaches and enters the cage to retrieve the prey, its weight or movement triggers an automatic mechanism, slamming the cage door shut. However, the fundamental ethical issues involved in the use of traps are not only those of suffering and death of trapped animals, but also those of stress and injury that they cause. There is also a risk of inadvertent capture of species that were not originally targeted especially in rural areas, where baboons are often considered pests. Farmers sometimes use guns to protect their crops. However, hunters need to ensure that they have all their licenses and government-issued hunting tags before starting the hunting process. There have been documented cases where farmers have had to use guns to control baboon populations, a threat to agricultural productivity. However, using guns to control baboon populations carries many risks from a safety perspective. 
Improper use can cause injury or even accidental death to people, especially in densely populated areas or near communities. One of the serious consequences of baboons appearing in urban areas is their aggressive behavior towards humans. These attacks not only cause injuries, but also stir up deep fear in people's hearts, directly affecting their daily activities and habits. In response to baboon intrusions, residents have installed electric fences, an effective protective measure designed to deliver non-fatal electric shocks. This fence consists of many electrical wires capable of shocking but not causing serious injury to the animals. Additionally, animals may be subjected to repeated electric shocks or, in rare cases, are at risk of becoming trapped or entangled in fences, leading to injury. Let's exchange ideas on how to control the baboon population in Florida. Please leave your comments in the comments section below. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Hope to see you again in the next videos.